guys, so in my last video, I talked a little bit about this and you guys asked me to kind of clarify some stuff. I really only talked about it briefly. That was my first trip with this. Now I've had a little bit more time with this. I can kind of explain what's going on here and why I have this set up as opposed to some other ones. And I'll show you guys what you would need to do if you end up doing something like this, how to seal the bed, how to make everything a little bit nicer. And maybe I'll go over some stuff that I have planned for this in the future. This is pretty minimalist and I will be building this out more in the future. So there are more things that I will need to add to this and I'll talk a little bit about that. So to start off with, this is a 2018 Tundra. I got it in the six and a half foot bed. I think it's a six foot seven inch bed here. And I got that so that I can sleep in here. I have a ranch topper with one door that is a um, pop-up door. I like that because I can put that underneath the side with my awning. And this also has a sliding door. So if I want to get some um, air in there, I can open that up. Like I said, this is the Ranch. I believe this is the Sierra Extra, the 21 and below. And that also does match up on the exact uh, color as my truck. So on this one, I have the one that folds up. I'll usually keep that open on a nice warm day. It is very windy today though, so I'm gonna keep that closed. On this one, we have a full sliding one here, but this does not pop open. So like I said, this is color matched here perfectly. Um, it is a one-to-one -one match on this one. This is a very uncommon color here, so they were able to nail that one. Uh, if you have like a Magnum, or silver magnetics gray or whatever um, that will be easier to match but the fact they were able to match it with this very um you know kind of one-off color here that is saying a lot now this does have a lock on both sides here as well as to here um, you can get a bunch of different options this is just what i went with and um, you can see the light comes on when that is raised and that is triggered here with a little latch. So over here I have the Kamek. This is the seven foot one and I have it at the middle setting. You can extend it out further and you can make it shorter. If I was sleeping at night, I would actually just keep it at the lowest position just to cover that window. So this does a really good job of blocking out weather if I have this side open and uh, I really like it for that. So if I have this window open, I don't have to worry about rain and stuff coming in. I can just have that open. All right, so to start off with on this side, we have a bed that is built out of wood. And basically the way that this connects to the bed and kind of keeps it from moving around here is with this little system right here. This is bolted in to the actual bed and then that is tightened and loosened with this. So if I want to loosen it up, I'll just do that. And basically, I could just pull that out there, and then I could pull those out. Now, there's one in here, and then there's one on the actual inside up there. That's the same case as this side here. It has one right here. And then it also has one on the inside in the back there on that side. And then I can just tighten that down. And that basically keeps it from moving around when you're off-roading. Now this side over here, I actually leave in here a lot of the time because it actually does have pretty good storage underneath. This side I will take out when I'm not camping and I will put it in there. Um, these I guess I would call more of like a cabinet over here. And this is the actual bed. Now this isn't fully stocked up because I haven't gone to my storage unit and stacked everything in there. But down here, I usually keep my scepter on this side in this little one, this little cubby. And then over here is usually where I'll put a heater. Now it depends what kind of camping I'm doing, but typically I'll put like a buddy heater or a diesel heater in there and uh, that'll sit right there. Over here is a shoe bag that I keep here and um, I'll put my shoes in there and just set them in 
the back is a storage place for the Reflectix, which goes on the windows. And then down here, I'll usually keep like extra stuff like blankets and stuff like that. Or I'll keep the uh, Devos Light Ranger down in there. Now, one thing I am trying to figure out and get a little bit better. So I have this Rux storage bin here. Um, this one is collapsible, but it does fit perfectly in this little gap. Yeah, it's just kind of perfect. So I like using that one, but the aisle here kind of gets uh, thrown to the wayside with that. But uh, this is kind of just storage for kitchen supplies, stuff like that. So this will keep all of my kitchen stuff. We've got uh, my knives in here. This is a set of Gerber knives and I'll keep that in there. Then on top of that, yeah, we've got some other kitchen stuff, just like, you know, general stuff in here. There's really just cooking stuff. You know, I've got this. This was a really popular one people asked about in the last one. Uh, I'll drop a link below to this. It's like three or four bucks. I think you can get these at Walmart, but I'll put an Amazon link below if you want to check that out. Oh. Now what I accidentally just hit there is the carbon monoxide alarm. And uh, I keep that in here and I will set it down and turn it on. This is great if you're using a buddy heater or any type of heater back here. This is just a, a nice little insurance that you're not getting a carbon monoxide poisoning in the middle of the night. I've talked about this bin in several videos, so I'm not going to go too in depth, but I will say this Rux fits perfectly in here. And I love that I can just slide it uh, either direction. So another thing that fits perfectly in here that actually wasn't even intentional, um, this blue eddy fits, I mean, dead on in between here and it doesn't move. So if I'm doing any off-roading, anything like that, that is going to sit still. And this is the thing in the back I was talking about back here. Um, that is your connector right there and that's on the inside. So um, it is secure on the front and the back. There. Up here I have my Devos Light Ranger, but typically, typically when I'm actually at camp, that Devos will be outside and this is kind of like a surface to eat from. I can have like a table set up or a desk you know, I can work off of this or just, you know, set things on here at night. Although I will say this actually works as a nice nightstand um, in conjunction with this as well. So over here, I have some new Hess stuff that I just got. Um, this is the pillow, but is inside out right now. So obviously, so obviously it is not this material when you're sleeping. I'll go ahead and undo that right now. Just turns inside out like that and um, and then you've got a comfortable pillow here I have a comforter in here as well and um, that plus this is perfect for camp this is an ignic heated blanket so this does a lot of the work here and then this is really nice for winter in conjunction with that but also just for like summer or spring fall um, this one's really great now i got the double which is good for an entire bed, but I got the double, even though I have a foamy wide mattress, I got the double anyway, just because worst case, it goes over the sides and who cares? So also in here, this is the cover for the pillow. So I will put that on before I go camping and this is how I sleep. Underneath that, you have the Hest mattress, which is by far the most comfortable mattress out there. I have tried several different mattresses. This is uh, this is the best one. I, I don't really see anyone arguing any otherwise. This is the most comfortable. It's more comfortable than my mattress in my bed at home. And uh, this one does have a sheet on it, which is really nice because then I don't have to worry about cleaning this after I go camping. And then on the bottom here, it is a water resistant um, underside there. And that is really nice. Like I said before, this is the Ignic heated blanket here. This is a 12 volt plug directly into here. And it is really nice because ideally I can camp with just this and a blanket, even when it's super cold and it works great. So we are on a pretty bad incline right now. So it's not super comfortable, but um, the pillow all the way up against here 
and then my feet actually have plenty of space and I can sleep sideways on here, straight up and down and everything's super comfortable. You know, even with the tailgate closed, I have plenty of space back here and it's not really an any issue. Now, if you have a five and a half foot bed, you might be able to make a platform that sleeps like this way, like diagonal across here, but I didn't want to do that. So I got the six and a half foot bed. So I have plenty of space back here, no issues whatsoever. I love this setup so much with the Hest and this little bed I have set up. This is like the ideal, the perfect setup, I think. You can get this without the rug if you want, but I would definitely recommend getting the rug up here just because that keeps um, it so much warmer in here. The real downside to this kind of setup compared to a rooftop tent is that windows here are horrible insulators. And uh, if it's very cold out, you're gonna feel that cold up against these windows. That is why I have the Reflectix here on here, as well as the back and the front over here. It feels very warm. The fiberglass plus this definitely keeps it warm in here. And I'm sure it would keep it nice and cool if the sun's beating down in the summer. I'm gonna try to lift this up without moving too much stuff here. Now that is one of the flaws of this bed build is that um, in order to get anything, I have to lift this up. I think if I was doing it again, I would do a drawer. Over on this side, we have a wrench set that I have. Now I just bring that with me all the time because you never know when you're gonna need it. Over here is the new complete set from Gerber. Um, this is basically everything I need at camp, plus those knives. So it's got stainless steel everything in there. This is my new way of cooking, and I love stainless steel. Everything is in there. I'll try to overlay on a screen here like what that exactly looks like because I'm basically propping this up with my knee right now. This is my jet boil here. I've made full videos on that, and I cooked on that in my last video. You can see more about that there. This over here is another little bin. That's where I keep some like recovery gear. This is Sandy Cats. This came in great handy the other day when I got stuck in the snow. The only reason I was able to get out was because of that. All the way right there is the thing that attaches that to the bed here. Um, it's easy to get to when you don't have the mattress and all that on top, but uh, right now it's kind of a little bit of a mess. Another storage compartment here, but uh, I'm not utilizing that yet. You can see over there that is the bed, so when this slides up, um, it is empty on that side, and that is the actual bed right there. This bed right here is sheet metal, and this all gets very cold. It's just sheet metal, so ideally, what I would add to this, and I probably will be adding here soon, is a bed rug. So that bed rug does two things. It will keep you um, warmer and cooler when it's hot or cold because sheet metal is horrible for insulation. It was like eight degrees last time I was camping. And when I touched this, it was horrendous. It was so cold right here. That also does fix a lot of the problems that I ran into when it came to sealing this bed, but I ended up putting some sealant here on this. It goes all the way down. And then down here as well. Well, turns out I'm really bad at caulking, but it still worked. I also removed the bed caps here and sealed underneath there. I hadn't seen a lot of people do that online, but um, I'm definitely glad I did because even when power washing or pressure washing the side of this, no water gets in over here, any of here or in the tailgate. So the next thing I would definitely recommend is getting some grommets and just finding where the grommets need to go. Um, I bought these and they fit perfectly right here. So um, I'll drop a link to the ones that I got. So the next thing you're gonna wanna do is this right here, ultimate tailgate seal. Basically, it has this little stuff. You can get whatever brand you want. This is just what I got from my research. And basically what you're gonna do here is close everything up. So close your tailgate, close your topper, 
and then just see where light comes out and then you're going to seal it there. So a little gap right here so that no water gets in or dust or anything there. This one right here, I cut it because of this little bumper and moved that there, ran it all the way down and then ran this across here, which I will say I don't necessarily love this one, but this is a big gap. So I might find a solution in the future that just covers this. I think the bed rug does do that, so I might end up going that route. But this is really annoying because it means that you have to actually close this tailgate pretty hard. Same on this side, you know, little gaps, just find where light is coming through, get inside of here, close everything up, see if there's any light and just block that. It's really pretty simple and uh, the bed seal works really great along with those grommets as well as the RVT or black caulking that I put up there. You can use either one of them. I'll drop links below to everything. So I'll go ahead and talk about some of the cons and the pros of this. The pros are it's definitely a lot better insulated than a rooftop tent. You can pull right up. You don't have to set anything up. I can just pull up somewhere and if I wanted to, I could even stealth camp if I wanted to, but that is not a major concern of mine. It would be nice for ski season. So maybe I'll try to do that since ski season is still going on here in Colorado. If you do have a topper already, this is super easy. You really could even just put a mattress on the floor if you wanted to stack everything up in one corner. You can do this with any truck, really. It will be slightly different on the things you need to seal. Ultimately, the same concept. The topper is great. I love being able to dry store things back here anyway, so I really love that. I went with a fiberglass one. You can go with whatever you want. I just like the ranch fiberglass. And I got that done over at Suburban Toppers. That came highly recommended, so that's where I got that installed. So the bed floor here is definitely a massive con because it is so cold. But since this is super warm up here, doing the same thing with the bed rug would definitely fix that issue. So it probably ends up being about the same price as a rooftop tent, but in this scenario, you do get an enclosed back, which I think is such a big bonus that I would definitely recommend getting a topper. This topper from Ranch is like, I think they call it double filled or whatever. So you can easily put a rooftop tent on top, no issues. Probably will get a lightweight one up there because I don't wanna just do this all the time. I wanna be able to do either or and kind of really go into the difference and see which one I like better. So because this does fully shut, I do feel a little bit more secure while I'm camping. This does shut up really nicely. And from the inside, you can even shut that, but you can't lock it from the inside. Though I very well may drill a little hole into this to actually put a lock on the inside. That would be nice, but I'm not majorly worried about that. I do actually carry quite a bit of protection in there. I'm not gonna talk too much about that on YouTube. It's right here next to me, so if someone did try to come in, I would uh, definitely have a nice vantage point right there.